hey, hey, hello, it's happening at last. The split side pinafore tutorial. This lovely thing that you've all requested heavily. Sorry it took me so long to get to it. I would blame it on the whole we have to move thing, but realistically it's more the fault of that giant ruffle dress that took me three weeks to make. But at last, that is done. It is time. I'm going to walk you through kind of how to turn a split side skirt into a split side pinafore so we can all look like we're straight out of Little House on the Prairie, but with a modern twist. Okay, let's start with the disclaimers, my favorite part. If you are looking for a tutorial that says, here's how much fabric you need, and here's the exact measurements, and here's the exact step-by-step -step of how to create this exact thing, this is not that. These are more like sewing theory, <laughs> experimentation and exploration, yay. So as usual, we are not going to be making this exact thing. I'm going to make two new split side pinafores. They're each going to be different from each other and hopefully they will each show you examples of what you can do so that you in turn can then create the exact split side pinafore that you want. I am narrowing the funnel a little in this tutorial. First of all, we're not really going to cover the split side skirt part of the pinafore because I already have two very long detailed tutorials <laughs> covering that subject. I'm also going to narrow down the style of pinafore I'm covering here. We're gonna just be doing bib front pinafores, which in my terminology at least is this style. It's not full coverage. It's not meant to be worn without anything underneath. You need an underlayer or you're gonna be getting a little uh, risque, which hey, that could be your thing and that would be fine. Now, of course, one of the benefits of the whole split side skirt that people are absolutely loving is that it's an adjustable piece of clothing when you have that lace front on the back panel. For this pinafore right here, I didn't use a lace front. I actually just put a snap right there to make it easier to get on. In my mind, it's still an adjustable piece of clothing because it's very easy to remove a snap and move it over slightly so that it's now tighter or looser. It's obviously not adjustable in the moment, but if I were to change size over time, I could adjust the piece of clothing to my changed size. For the two pinafores that I'm gonna be making in this video, I wanna try some different things. So for one of them, I'm actually going to try the very traditional method of having both the back panel and the front panel tie on. And for the second one, I want to try something that a bunch of people suggested on that original skirt video, which is recycling the hooks from the back of a bra. I have a couple old bras here that I haven't worn from ages, so I can just take this part off of the back and attach that to the end of my back panel waistband. And that makes it a little adjustable because you now have three different options of where you can close it, just like a bra. Time for a side note. When I buy bras, I swear, I either buy it, get home, immediately dislike it and never ever wear it again, or I buy it, get home, decide it's my favorite bra in the world and wear it until it is literally disintegrating off of my body. There is no in between. I think that's all the disclaimers. Let me sneak in the last one of like, I'm still a very novice sewist and I still don't grandly know what I'm doing. So, you know, I'm sure I quite often do not do things the right way, but I'm also of the opinion that if you like the final product, there is no right way to get there. There is just whichever way you took to get there. Creation of any kind really doesn't require many rules. These are the two materials I'm gonna use. I have a white material that has like a very light stripe in it. I've got a bunch of this and I kind of thought it'd be fun to make a pinafore that has a very classic white apron sort of look to it. So that's what this is for. The second one, I'm gonna be using this slate blue material that has like a slightly raised pattern, I guess. It's not really a pattern. Texture, we'll call it a texture. Thank you for all your votes on Instagram. This one won by a landslide, so it's what we're going with. As with any of my projects that I do without a pattern, I don't know how much fabric there is here. I didn't check, I don't really care. I'll alter what I'm making to accommodate the amount of fabric that I have. That being said, I did choose two pieces of fabric out of my stash 
that are rather chunky, specifically so that I could make a decent sized pinafore without running out of material. I think one of the reasons that I love working without a pattern so much is because you have that ability to adjust whatever you're making to accommodate anything that changes along the way. If I find out I don't have quite enough fabric for the specific thing I was going to do, I can just change my design a little and still come out with something that I like in the end. That being said, if you're watching this video going, but I need to know how much fabric to buy. Um, it depends. Y'all, it really depends. It depends on your size and your measurements. It depends on how long of a skirt you're going to make. And that's so specific to you and what you're specifically wanting to create that I really don't know how I could give you any sort of exact number. As always, I do recommend using thrifted fabrics. Both of these are from my favorite place in the entire world, remainders. But thrifted curtains, duvet covers, bed sheets, those are amazing, especially for skirts, especially for circle skirts, because you can get a really good sized circle out of a sheet with no trouble whatsoever. All right, so all of that being said, let's look at my starting design plan for both of the pinafores and then we will get into making them. All right, pinafore one is going to be the white material. Both of them are going to be circle skirts. I'm hoping to get the white one fairly long, not a full maxi skirt, but like a long T length. Of course, we've got those pockets in like all the split side skirts that I make. We'll get a bib front on here like so. On this one, I'm gonna put the straps coming directly out the top. I think I'll have them cross in the back, much like the one I'm currently wearing. So this is pretty basic. This is your basic split side skirt pinafore right here, but I do want to spice it up a little. So I'd like to add some ruffles onto the edge of the straps, actually coming up from the bib front, going all the way up the straps, and they'll probably fade off about halfway down those straps in the back so that it doesn't get too bulky. Last thing I might do here, just because this is reminding me sort of of a traditional apron and I'd like it to have functionality. So I might actually throw on some extra pockets. Those side pockets are still gonna be there, but why not add a few in the front as well? Jumping over to pinafore number two, this is going to be the blue slate material. Once again, we have hopefully that circle skirt. This one is going to be shorter, more the length of the current green one I'm wearing, maybe even a little shorter than that. Now to pinafore it, we will again add a bib to the front, another little rectangle here, probably a little wider and shorter than the first one, just for a different look. I'd love to throw a center pocket onto that very overall style. One thing I would like to try here just to see what it looks like is adding a back bib as well. In other words, a square of fabric coming off the back waistband. And then for this one, we're going to avoid any kind of snapping, buttoning, anything like that on the straps and we're just gonna go tying all the way. So we'll have our straps coming out of the front bib like so and then out of the back bib as well and they will be intended to tie on the shoulders. Highly adjustable to whatever your shoulder size is. Okay, Matt and I just went to Disneyland for the first time. Yes, we've lived here for like two years and hadn't gone to Disneyland yet. Well, I had technically gone to Disneyland for a job in the middle of the night. Anyway, I needed a new sippy cup, which is what it feels like when I carry around the container of water all day long. And I was like, you know what? I'm splurging and getting this adorable Mary Poppins one. And now I feel like it goes with this pinafore so well. We gotta match our outfit to our water drinking vessel. No, complete coincidence. Moving on, let's make some pinafores. I'm gonna move to the floor now. So first up, a quick note on how I get a longer circle skirt out of a potentially too small piece of fabric, just in case it's helpful to anyone. I start by completely unfolding it and then laying it with the right side down. And then I fold over one end, the length of my skirt plus my waist radius. For this exact skirt, that is 42 inches. Then I use one corner of this to do the first half of my circle skirt, marking out both the semicircle that is going to be the waistband and the semicircle that is going to be the hem. Now, there's not enough room on the fabric for me to stack another half circle directly below the first one. It's not long enough, 
but the joy of the semicircle is that on that diagonal, it's a lot shorter per se. So now I take the other side of the fabric and I fold that over the same length, that 42 inches. It is going to overlap the first side of the fabric, but the first thing that I measure out is from those diagonal corners. If I measure inward, can I get the full 42 inches without touching in the center? And if you can, with whatever your measurements are, then you can get a full circle skirt out of this fabric. In this case, it worked with like four inches of extra space. So I have my two half circles being cut out of the corners and it does give me a good amount of fabric left over. So typically I'm pretty risky and at this point I would go ahead and cut out the circles and then figure out how to fit everything else that I need onto the remaining fabric. But since I gave you a design and we're trying to get that full design out of this fabric, I was a lot more careful and I did a lot of measuring and pinning and trying to make sure that I could fit everything that I needed on this piece of fabric. And eventually I did give up, but I am 99% sure that I can. For this exact style, here are the pieces that we're going to need. First up, we need our back panel and our front panel. In this case, that is two semicircles. Next up, I need my pockets. They're sort of this-ish shape, and I need four of those, two for each side. Then I'm going to need my back waistband. I don't do curved waistbands because I place everything right on my waist, so a straight one fits pretty much fine. That means that my back waistband, my front waistband, they're all just long rectangles. There are a lot of long rectangles in this design. Now, because on this pinafore, we don't have any sort of back bib, there's nothing coming out of the back waistband, you can choose for yourself whether it's better to cut it as two long rectangles or one long rectangle that's a little wider and will be folded in half. I'm aiming for about a two inch waistband on this one, so I could either do two rectangles that are three inches wide, or I could do one rectangle that's five inches wide, and either way, I'll have my half inch seam allowance. As for the length, you're gonna decide that depending on what kind of closure you're doing in the front. So for example, on this pinafore, the back waistband is actually longer than my waist size so that it can overlap in the front and snap. I think I started with like 38 inches. However, on this white one, I wanna do a tie front. I don't, however, want this kind of a bow right here underneath. It would be big, it would be lumpy, so I don't wanna be tying the actual two inch waistband itself. I can use a ribbon, a cord, bias tape, I can make a thin little tie myself, but it's gonna be much, much smaller than the waistband so that it just makes a small flat knot that won't show on the outside of the pinafore. Since that's what's going to be meeting in the front, I only need my waistband to go as far as my pockets. So to find that measurement, I just measure halfway around my waist from the back. I could just say it's 16 inches because my waist is 32, half of that is 16, but I typically go up to 18 inches for these split side skirts, just so that there's a little bit more of an overlap on the side where those splits are. Then I'll just add the length of my pockets. I'm gonna make the top of my pockets just four inches long. I often do six inches and they almost meet in the center, but I wanna give this skirt a little bit more adjustability without anything overlapping. So I'm just gonna cut it down to four and I can still slope those pockets out to 10 inches on the bottom, which is what I typically do anyway. So 18 inches plus my two four inch pockets is up to 26 inches, I'm gonna give myself an extra inch on each side for a big seam allowance, and I'm gonna cut that back waistband out as 28 inches by three times two, or 28 inches by five times one. Next up, we have the front waistband. This one only has to reach to basically my side seams because after that, I'm attaching the sashes from there on out. So it really only needs to be 18 inches long, but I am gonna give myself that same one inch of extra space on each end and do it 20 inches long. Now the front waistband has the pinafore coming out of it, so it does need to be two different pieces. So front waistband, 20 inches long, three inches wide, times two. Then we have the sash. 
Your sashes can be as long as you want. If you want to be able to bring them back around to the front and tie them in a bow there, they're going to need to be longer. If you prefer just a small knot in the back, they can be a lot shorter. It's really up to you. Get like a ribbon or something and play around with the size of bow that you like, the size of your waist itself, and see what a good sash length is for you. I often just end up going with whatever I have left on my fabric but I wanna keep it around like 36 inches. Not too much less than that, more than that is fine. Again, we want the sash to match the width of the waistband because it is attaching directly to that. So it needs to be three inches wide and I'm gonna need four of those, two for each side. Or theoretically, if I'm a little pinched for fabric, I could also do five inches wide, fold it in half, and then I only need two of those instead of four. That right there, is the skirt. That's just the skirt. So let's move on to what this is actually about, the pinafore. First up, we need the rectangle that is the front bib. This size is totally up to you. I know that my waistband is going to fall sort of right under my ribs because I put everything on the high waist. So I'm just measuring from right there and kind of going, eh, where do I want this one to fall? I'm going with an 11 by 11 square for this one and I am gonna cut out two of these mainly just because I like there to be a nice clean edge right here on top. So two layers, I like it. Now on this white one, I'm not gonna have the straps starting from the waistband like I did on this green one. They're gonna start from the top of the bib. So I just need to measure from right about there over my shoulder and I know where my waistband is going to be. So I measure slightly past that so that I have some extra room for adjustment. Keep my thumb right there. That's 28 inches. I could make them anywhere from 28 up to 30 inches to give myself a little bit of extra space if I want to be able to adjust those straps. I'm gonna do them two inches wide so that they match the width of the waistband and it gives some sort of like coordination to the whole piece. I don't know, it might look good, it might not. So that means I need four more strips of fabric, 28 to 30-ish inches long, three inches wide. Again, this is another one that I could do two pieces that are five inches wide rather than four pieces that are three inches wide. And I could just do a fold in the fabric on this side and have the ruffle sewn in on this side. Sometimes that one inch that you're taking off the width can really save you. So that's pretty much the functional pieces that we need. But on this one, I wanted to add that ruffle all down the side. Now, from what I've seen on my fabric, I'm not gonna have space to do it as a typical flounce that is cut out of a circle. However, I'm gonna try something that I don't know will work. We're just gonna go with it anyway. I'm going to follow the hem of of my two circle skirts and cut out sort of a lightly curved strip of fabric there. It might not flounce as much as I want it to, so I'm also gonna cut it out a little longer than I need so that I can lightly gather it as well. This is an experiment, it may not work. If you wanna do a regular ruffle, you can just cut out a rectangle and gather it on one side. If you wanna do a flounce, you'll need that spiral cut. There are lots of videos on how to make a ruffle and a flounce, so I'll let you look those up on your own. But as far as the measurement goes, it's gonna start kind of like these straps do all the way at the base coming out of the waistband. And I want it to taper out to its widest point on the top of my shoulder and then taper back in on the other side. So to the very top of my shoulder is about 18 inches, 17, 18. And then if I pull my measuring tape into where I'm gonna have the strap falling again, I can kind of line it up with the middle of my back, which is where I want the ruffle to stop. I don't want it to go all the way to the end of the strap. And that gives me like 27 inches. Since I'm going to make it easier on myself and just do a little bit of gathering, I'm actually gonna do it on the fold and just do it 18 inches long, but times two, so 36 total. When in doubt, or rather, <laughs> When you don't feel like figuring out the really precise measurement, throw some gathering in, makes everything easier. The last thing that I want is a couple front pockets. I want two of them. They only need to be one layer each. They'd probably be, I'm guessing like 10 by seven inch rectangles. So I can fold over that top, get neat stitching all the way around. I might also go ahead and cut those front ties out of this fabric in which case they're gonna be like one inch wide and maybe 12 inches long, very small. All right, so that is everything that we need for pinafore number one. So let's move on to sewing.
daddy give you a treat? Yeah, hi. Got everything I wanted with just this left. All right, let's sew. And yes, it is the next day. I'm still doing half days. So I'm actually gonna start with the pinafore top, the bib and the straps and everything, and then I'll be able to easily add that to the waistband of the skirt and kind of work down from there. You could also make the skirt first and leave the waistband open and then add the pinafore on at the end. There are no rules. As usual, I don't fully know what I'm doing, even though I called this a tutorial. So if I mess up along the way, I'll let you know. I'm gonna start with the ruffle and I'm actually going to hem the outer edge first so that that's done and out of the way and I think it'll be easier to hem it. Oh my God, there's a hair and I just want it to go away. I think it'll just be easier to hem it before gathering it and sewing it on. I can already kind of tell that the um, attempt to make it flouncy without doing a circle is basically gonna fail. That's pulling it straight and there's no flounce. Good thing I made it bigger because it's basically a ruffle. I'm just gonna do the smallest little rolled hem that I can on the edge of this because I don't want to lose too much of the width. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Why are you so far away? Oh my god. My pedal is always running away from me. Come back here. Whoo! Well, I did not enjoy that. I don't like small hems. Now that that is hemmed, I'm going to run two rows of gathering stitches, wide, low tension, all the way down the other side so that I can gather it up to the size I want. Now the joy here is I don't have a really specific place where I want the ruffle to end. I just want to make sure that it goes over my shoulder and then it can end kind of whenever works. So I'm just gonna gather it up lightly to something that looks good to me and not be too picky about it. I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'm gonna take my front bib and line up the ruffle with the edge of it so that I can see where I need to start the strap. And I'll just mark that place with a pen. So now I know that from here to here is gonna be on the strap and then from here down is going to be on the side of the front bib. Now I can take one of my straps, which I did as one big piece that's gonna be folded in half and laying it out flat, I'll pin right side to right side from the place that I've marked all the way up to the edge, pinning the ruffle straight onto the edge of the strap. And while I'm doing this, I'm also spreading out the gathers as evenly as possible. So now it looks like this. Now I'm gonna baste that on so that when I sew the strap together, it won't shift around or anything. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to fold my strap in half with the right sides together, making sure to roll up this ruffle and get it fully inside there so it doesn't get sewn over again. And of course, if you are not putting a ruffle on your straps, this is where you join in. All you have to do to start is take your one rectangle or or two rectangles that are your straps and sew them into a long tube. You can close off the end of the tube that's going to be the back side of your straps because that just needs to be neat and clean. And then you can leave the side that's going to go into the bib open because that's already gonna get enclosed anyway. Trim off your excess fabric, turn the whole thing right side out. You should have a lovely tube. The ruffle kind of helps with the turning out. How handy. So there we have it, we have a tube with some ruffle on the end. I'm gonna repeat all of this on the other strap and then I'm gonna iron both of them because yes, I do iron sometimes and then we'll move on. And as expected, there was probably an easier way to do this because this next step is now more complicated. If you're not putting these connected ruffles on the side of your front bib, the next step is super simple. You're gonna take the two squares or rectangles that are your front bib and pin them right side to right side. And before you sew around, make sure you pin the tubes that are your straps inside where you want them to come out on the top. Then you're basically sewing around three sides, turning the whole thing right side out, ironing it flat, that is your apron or pinafore bib. Easy peasy. I, of course, had to do these stupid connected ruffles, so not easy peasy. <laughs> but what I'm going to do right now, because of what I've already done, is take my finish strap and pin the remaining ruffle edge to the side of the bib, right side to right side, and then baste it down. Now I'm going to stack the inside of the bib on top, right side to right sides, 
and sew down normally so that that ruffle is in between the layers. And when I turn it right side out, it'll be sticking out the edge. And of course, then you're gonna do that same thing on the other side, so you'll end up with something like this. And then you can turn that right side out to get those ruffles where they should be, like so. And you can iron that again right now. I'm lazy, so I'm gonna wait until I finish closing up the top, why not? So here's where it gets a little tricky. We want to close up the top of the bib with a nice clean seam that encapsulates our straps. But also, we've already attached something down the entire side, so it doesn't work as easily as it does if you have no ruffles. So if it's anything like mine, it's going to hate doing this because the ruffle is in the way, but you're basically just twisting the straps so that they go in the direction that they should be going, which is down and out of your inside out bib. I hope that makes sense. If you do that on both sides, line it up properly, force it into place and pin it there, you should be able to sew across the top, turn it right side out and have clean seams. Shall we find out? All right, so what I ended up with is sort of purposefully looking, that's the key word, rounded corners here, which I'm okay with. So the last thing that I'm going to do is top stitch around those three edges just to clean them up, make them look nicer. I love a little bit of top stitching. That arguably did not make it look better. I am not very good at going around corners, am I? And that is our finished pinafore bib. I actually do like how it looks. It's a little wonky around the edges, but the lesson here is definitely not do what I do, but more of don't be afraid to experiment. Ultimately, the bib of your pinafore is just a squarish rectangle with straps. Super easy to make. And there's a lot of variations you can do on that. So don't be afraid to play around, try different things. It's okay if it looks a little wonky. It always looks way better from a distance. But I also do recognize that I call this a tutorial, so the second pinafore is much more straightforward and will not have these complications. <laughs> That's why I do two. And you can always skip to that one if you're looking for a more un- ruffled version. Let's finish up this one though. So the next thing I'm gonna do is add this bib onto the front waistband. I'm gonna fold each rectangle in half and mark the center, and then I'll do the same thing to the bib. And now it's a very easy sandwich. You're just putting your waistband right side to right side with the bib right in the middle. Then we're gonna sew all the way down that line to attach all three pieces. Now when you fold both sides of your waistband down, you've got a waistband on your bib. Before I iron that down, because again, I'm lazy, I'm gonna go ahead and add the sash pieces. So I did these as single pieces that are going to be folded over. So this one's super easy. You're just doing right side to right side on the end of the waistband and sewing a straight stitch. So I've now got my pinafore bib on the front waistband with the sashes attached. They need to be sewn closed, but before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and sew the front panel of the skirt onto the waistband. And oh my God, there are so many threads everywhere. Remember when I said I was gonna get a serger soon? I guess soon has not yet arrived. So I have the center of my waistband marked so that I can line up the center of my front panel of the skirt. This is covered in the split side skirt tutorial video, so I'm not gonna go into it here, but at this point you should have anything that you're planning to do to your front panel done. Whether that's hemming up the sides, gathering, pleating, all of that should be finished so that this is ready to sew onto your waistband. Right side to right side, make sure you are pinning it onto the front of your bib, not the back side of your bib. Double check now, don't seam rip later. A lesson I have learned the hard way many times. We've got the bib on the waistband, on the skirt. Now we're gonna take the two ends of our sashes, start with one, then do the other, and you're gonna fold right side to right side. And we're gonna sew all the way down until we reach the edge of that skirt, and then turn it right side out. Our sashes are closed up, ironed, nice and neat. The last thing that we need to do is flip over the edge of the waistband and then top stitch it down so it's nice and clean. So at this point, you have an apron. 
if an apron is what you're going for, congrats, you're pretty much done. If you're really bored of sewing and you just feel like quitting, well, at least you made an apron. There is one more thing that I'm going to do with this front section before I add the back section on and make it an actual split side pinafore, and that is add some front pockets right here because you can never have too many pockets. I've put a pin just right where I think the top should go, and then let's lay out the skirt and make that more precise. So you can see my pins right there and right there. I'm gonna fold the skirt in half down the center so that I have two symmetrical sides, and then I can line up the pockets perfectly on each side, theoretically like so. So for the pockets, I folded over the top twice so there's a nice clean edge and sort of a wide band. Ironed that and then I'm going to stitch it down, like so. Then I'm going to fold over all of the edges once, just like a fourth of an inch or so, and sew that down as well. Then I'm going to fold over all of the edges one more time, iron that down, and that is what I will sew around when I sew it onto the skirt. Double line around the whole thing because we like extra protection and we've got pockets. All that we need now is the back half of this skirt. So again, the back half of this pinafore is pretty much exactly the same as you would make a split side skirt. Nothing needs to be done to it to turn it into this specific kind of pinafore, except putting a securing method for the straps on the back, which we'll get into at the very end. And that is probably going to be tomorrow because it's already getting pretty late, so. To go through it very quickly, I started with the pockets. I took the front layer of each pocket and folded over the edge, sewing it down so I have a clean line there. I then French seamed around the outside edges of the pockets. Following the stitch line that already exists, I then sewed the pockets closed to the height that I wanted. The pockets could then be stitched onto the skirt, right side to right side, and then I completed the stitch all the way down the side of the skirt, just like I did on the front panel so that I have a nice clean edge there as well. After that, I just base down the top of the pocket so that it won't flap around as I get the waistband on. Next, I took my two very thin, long rectangles to make those ties, and I sewed them into tubes and turned them right side out, which took me ages. I recommend cutting these on the bias so that they stretch a little bit and it makes it easier to turn them right side out. For some reason, I really wanted to line them up with the stripes, so I did not do that. I had cut my back waistband in two pieces, so I placed those pieces right side to right side with the ties stuck into the proper place on each end, and then sewed all all the way around those three sides. Then I pinned the waistband onto the skirt, matching up the centers so that it's all even, and sewed it on. It's a good idea to iron your waistband at this point so that it's gonna be laying flat, and then you're flipping over that last edge and top stitching it down for a nice, clean, finished waistband. And now we have this back panel skirt thing on its own and the front apron on its own, so we just need to attach them up the sides. Right side to right side, I line up the waistbands and then pin down the two pieces, making sure to mark where I want to start stitching so that I have that split side and I can get the whole piece on. Then it's just a simple straight stitch up both sides and you have a finished complete split side pinafore. Well, okay, not really. Then and I hemmed it. <laughs> Just a simple rolled hem around the bottom for me. You can do it however you please. There is one last thing we need to finish this whole thing off, and it is a way to attach the straps onto the back waistband. I'm typically more of an easy peasy, use snaps, hook and bars, anything like that kind of person, but since I'm going with a more traditional look here, I do want to try buttons instead. First, I tried this on and pulled the straps to where I'm going to want them to fall in the back, and then I marked on the straps where that place falls so that I know where to make my buttonhole. I am going to actually make three buttonholes though so that the straps have some adjustability. So this is going to be the center one and then I'll make one above it and one below it as well. I'm going to put the buttons on the inside of the back waistband because they're not really decorative, they're just functional. You could do the whole thing on the outside of the back waistband if you have really cute buttons that you wanna show off. Or you could put the buttonholes on the waistband and the buttons on the strap 
straps so that the buttons come through and are visible on the back. It's totally up to you. Again, mark where you want your buttons to go while you're wearing the piece so that you know where it's gonna fall on your body. But then once you take it off, also measure and make sure that they're evenly spaced from the center line. Then we're just doing a bit of hand stitching. Make sure that you're not going through both layers. You don't wanna see that stitching on the outside of your waistband. So you're just going through the inside layer when you're stitching on the buttons. Believe it or not, this is actually my first time ever making buttonholes on a machine. I mean, I practiced a bunch right here after watching several videos, but first time generally speaking. I'm just not much of a button person, so I've never needed them before. We're all learning today. Like so. And then we cut them open. So we've got that. And that's it. Let's take a look at the final piece and then move on to our second pinafore. Y'all ready for round two? This one should theoretically be a little more cut and dried. Plain and simple, straightforward. Ooh, but first, I have bird updates. If you are really just here for the tutorial, my apologies, but this uh, backyard bird drama has been going on for like three or four or five weeks now, I don't really remember, and I have tea. So the dove that I thought was a baby dove, kind of grown up now, who had come back to just live in the nest and not move out, turns out that's actually a new mama. Maybe it's the same mother dove, maybe it's a new mother dove, I don't know. But it's a new mother. The reason that she never left the nest was because she was sitting on eggs and they've hatched. So we have a second round of dove babies living in this same nest, once again adorable. Makes a lot more sense. I guess doves reuse their nest or just upcycle old nests from other doves? I don't know, crafty of them. Anyway, that's what's happening with the birds in our backyard. Now let's make the second pinafore. I have a really decent amount of this fabric. <laughs> Ow. So I feel pretty safe telling you what pieces I'm gonna use before I actually make sure if they'll fit on the fabric. I think I'll actually have plenty left over. So once again, we're starting out with two half circles for the skirt, the front panel and the back panel. And this time I wanna do what I actually wanted to do on the last one, but didn't end up doing. I'd like to cut them too big around the waistline and gather it for a little extra swoosh. I'm not planning to make this one as long as the last one. It's gonna be more of a regular knee length somewhere around there. I might go as far up as like a 10 inch radius. And then about 25 inches long hits me around my knee length. Next up, as before, we need four pockets. Because of the way I'm gonna do the closure on this one using those bra hooks, the pockets can actually pretty much reach each other in the center. They don't need any sort of adjustability space because this skirt simply won't be as adjustable as the one that ties in the front or laces up. So I'm gonna do my typical seven inches on top, 10 inches on the bottom, and 16 inches tall 
with a slope connecting those sides. Next up, we of course have the back waistband, another long rectangle. This one of course needs to come pretty much all the way around because it needs to meet in the front where those bra hooks are connecting. These are only about two inches long, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut out a waistband that is 32 inches, the size of my waist, and that gives me an inch on each side that I can lose for seam allowance. Now, as far as the width of the waistband, I don't want it to be too much wider than these, so this is about one and a quarter. I'm gonna do my waistband one and a half inches. I also need another inch of seam allowance. And of course, that back waistband does need to be cut in two pieces because I'm aiming to put a bib on the back of this pinafore. The front waistband, once again, only needs to be 20 inches to reach a little past the side seams. And then that same 2.5 inches wide. So next up, we of course need the sashes. Again, I'm gonna make those around 36 inches long, just depending on how much fabric I have. They're gonna be that same 2.5 inches wide. And for this, I'm gonna do it as two separate pieces for each side of the sash instead of one piece folded over like I did last time. Really just personal preference. Try out either thing, fit whatever you can fit on your fabric. Both of them work. So that covers all of the skirt pieces. So now we're looking at what we need for the pinafore bib itself. Once again, I'm just going to measure my own body and see what feels good for me. I like about 10 inches across the bust because that kind of hits me on my peak area here. So of course I'm gonna do 11 inches wide so that I have seam allowance. And then I think just eight inches tall is gonna work on this one nine inches with seam allowance. One thing I would like to do on this one is actually slope it in towards the waistband so it has a little bit of a trapezoid shape, 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 trapezoid shape, that's hard to say, or just diagonal sides. So it's gonna be 11 inches wide at the top, but I'm gonna drop that down to just nine inches wide at the bottom. And then I want that front pocket to go onto that bib. I want it to be evenly spaced from all the sides, so I'm going to also make it slightly slanted, slightly diagonal, diagonal so that it matches that exact shape of the bib itself. So I'm gonna make this six inches tall, six inches wide on the bottom, and eight inches wide on the top. I'd also love to put sort of a scalloped edge across the top of this pocket, so I might play around with that a little bit. Next up, we need the back bib. I don't want the back one to be the same size as the front one, because the front one is going over boobs, so it's bigger. I also want the back one to be a little shorter. I don't really know why, but since I've done those diagonal slopes on the front, one, I'm gonna do that on the back as well, just so that it ties in. I'm gonna go with eight inches wide on the bottom, 10 inches wide on the top, and seven inches tall. So the last thing we need is the straps. There are, of course, four of them because they're gonna tie on the shoulders, so we need some coming out of the back bib and some coming out of the front bib. These don't have to be super precise because there just needs to be enough room for them to tie into a double knot, but I don't want a bunch of extra streamers coming from the shoulder either. From measuring, I know that I need at least 10 inches on the front one and at least 12 on the back just for them to sort of comfortably meet. I'm gonna give each side an extra 10 inches to accommodate the tying factor, and I can always shorten those if I try it out in the end and don't like it. I'm also gonna taper the ends of both of those straps so that they go into sort of a curved point. It just looks aesthetically pleasing. All right, so that is all the pieces that we need for this exact pinafore. I'm gonna get to cutting out, but I assume that editing magic has made everything already cut out. So let's get sewing. That was so tutorial-ish of me. Let's get sewing. I'm gonna start on the back this time. <laughs> so first up, we have four pieces for the back straps. I'm gonna lay two right side to right side, sew around the outside, turn them right side out into a tube, and then iron them. I'm actually gonna top stitch around the edge of these straps as well, just because I think this piece has a very sort of denim look to it, and I think top stitching will look really cute with that. Okay, we have two straps. Now we're going to put the bib right side to right side, and we're inserting the straps between the two layers, pointing down so that when we turn it right side out, 
they'll be pointing up. And make sure you're keeping your seam allowance in mind with where you place your straps. If you put them right up next to the edge, you're not gonna have space to sew the two pieces together down the sides. Now I'm gonna lay the other piece on top. You could go ahead and baste the straps down. Basting is always a good option. I just don't do it much. All right, now I'm going to sew that together up the sides and across the top. And then we can turn the whole thing right side out, like so. And again, to match the theme, I'm gonna top stitch around the outer edge. The theme, the style, whatever. So now we can attach the bib onto the back waistband. As always, I'm gonna start by folding it in half and marking my center on both pieces. Match center mark to center mark, and you're pinning right side to right side, and then same with your second piece, right side to right side, so you've got a little bib sandwich, like so. Now we are going to stitch all the way down the length of the back waistband, but before we do that, we want to include the closure system that's going to be on the end of that waistband. If you're gonna do a snap or a button, then it might just be clean ends and you're gonna sew that on later so they overlap. For me, it is the bra hooks. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and sew the straight line all the way down and then I can close off the ends afterward. I think having it already sewn together will help me know exactly what the placement of the closure should be. Also, because there's not a lot of adjustability in this, I'm going to want to test this, try it on, and make sure that it closes well before I actually sew it in. It looks like it falls pretty comfortably on the middle hooks, which is where I want it to be. So now I'm going to fold it open and pin the hooks going in the opposite direction. Then it's like that. Hooks are like that, that side's good. All right, let's see if I got it right. That looks right, time for the other side. We want the hooks to be facing in this direction so it gets sewn on like that. Obviously the direction you're sewing on your closures is very much going to depend on the direction you're looking at your waistband. So that is why I very much recommend that you just test and retest to make sure you're sewing them on their right and then you don't have to seam rip it out. Okay, there we have it. I'm gonna get this waistband ironed down and then I'm going to add the back panel that includes the pockets and everything. Again, pretty much stuff I went over in the earlier video, so I'll come back to you with the front bib. All right, y'all, we're back. The back half of the pinafore is finished. We got our pockets, same as always. And the straps definitely seem long enough to tie in a knot here and just have a little bit left over. Let's make the front half. This is basically the exact same process as doing the back half. So once again, I'm going to start with the straps, right side to right side, sew them into a tube, turn them right side out. And I'm gonna top stitch them just like I did on the back straps because that is what we're doing here. Again, just like we did on the back bib, we're going to sandwich the two straps in between the two layers of the front bib, right side to right side, and sew around the three edges. And we trim off the excess, and we turn the whole thing right side out, and then we top stitch. And by we, I mean me. You don't have to top stitch, you could just iron instead. And there is our front bib. Let's add the pocket to the front of this. So for the pocket, Right side to right side, so basically around the whole thing. You're just leaving yourself enough space so that you can turn it right side out. Pretty much like you would if you were making a pillow covering. I'm gonna leave that opening on the bottom because I'm then going to top stitch around the entire piece when I sew it onto the front. So that'll sew that last little section closed anyway and I won't even have to hand sew it. Yay laziness. Now I am going to attempt to scallop the top edge of this pocket to just put in three little round humps instead of having a straight line. That's totally my little design preference for this. And I don't know if it'll work. Let's try it. What could go wrong? I could suck at sewing curves. And there we go. That's the pocket. I'm gonna top stitch around the whole thing first and then center it on my front bib and just sew it down around those three edges. And there we have it. Pocket! All right, let's get that front waistband on. We know the drill by now. We're marking the center of both of our waistbands, the center of our bib, lining it up, sandwiching it, sewing all the way down. 
Now let's set that aside and we can sew the two pieces of each sash into one piece. So I'm sewing it all the way down one side, right side to right side. And since I've done the little pointed ends, I'm actually just gonna stop right where that curve starts and I will sew that closed on the next step. So now we can take our one long sash and pin it onto the end of the front waistband. And then we can sew that on. So now you should have one long sash coming out of your front waistband. Fold that in half, right side to right side, and we're gonna close it up like a tube. So I'll start sewing on the end here, right where I stopped before the little tapering and go all the way around and back. But I'm going to stop sewing when I reach the front waistband because that's where we're going to be adding the skirt in. Now I can turn that entire tube right side out just like we did with the straps. And I may regret this choice because it may not look good, but I think I am going to still top stitch around it so that it looks similar to the straps. And of course, once you finish the first side, you repeat all of that for the other side of the sash. So in the end, this is what we have. We've got our front bib with the waistband still open, but the sash fully sewn closed, ironed, if you're into that. Everything is ready to go. And now we are just going to add our front skirt panel to the front waistband. I've already gathered mine. Again, whatever you're doing to yours, gathering, pleating, you wanna do first. And then we're just matching up those centers, pinning it on and sewing across the top. There we go, it's attached. And the last step for our front panel is going to be top stitching the back of the waistband down. There you go, looking for an apron, you're done. But we're making a pinafore, so let's sew the back panel onto this front panel from about here down to the bottom, throw a hem on the whole thing, and then we're done. Let's take a look at the final product. Baby. Hmm. Okay, no. Y'all, that was an excessive amount of filming and photographing that I just did. I feel like you can tell the order of outfits that I did by the de-evolution of my bun. It was so neat for about five minutes and now it's just frizz city. Oh well. All right, enough of that. There you have it. What more is there to say? I am loving both of these final products. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make them. I hope that you go make tons of split side pinafores of your own. They're so much fun and I'm not much of a layering person. I'm really like lazy but efficient and practical when it comes to getting dressed and I like to put on as few articles of clothing as possible which is why I love comfy knit dresses. But I must say, layering the pinafores, having so many different options of various outfit styles that you can make with them, it is really fun. Anyway, if you have any questions about the process, anything that was not clear in my tutorial, I, I tried to get as much detail in there as possible, but 
I know I'm not great at explaining things sometimes. Do feel free to ask those in the comments. I try to answer my comments every two weeks or so, so I will attempt to answer if you ask a question. And as always, I want to give a massive shout out to Melanie of Wildflower Design and the Coquico skirt that originally inspired me to try out this whole split side method. I mentioned this in my previous videos and I'll say it again, I have no interest in making patterns, so I'm never going to make a pattern for these pinafore skirts, anything that I come up with in the future. Tutorials are about as good as it's gonna get. So if you're a sewist who prefers to use a pattern, if that is your jam, then I highly recommend heading over to Wildflower Design and checking out her Coquico skirt and her pinafore extension pack for that skirt. I will have that linked in the description of this video if you're interested. And I'm sure this video is extremely long between all of the details and all of the uh, uh, tangents. So let's wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching. If you are interested in more project videos, I don't make a whole lot of tutorials. I mostly just make project vlog sort of things. But yeah, if you like that, if you're interested, do feel free to subscribe. My videos come out every Friday and I, I have no idea what's coming out soon. There's probably going to be some moving stuff because we're moving. What was that? This was neither this nor this. It was like halfway in between. My brain couldn't decide. We're moving or we're moving to a place where there will hopefully be fewer sirens nearby. And it is an absolute disaster in this room, so I'm gonna go clean up. Later, taters. Mm -hmm.